So now let's work with something called emitter inside of Cinema 4D right here. So in order to access the emitter, emitter I'm going to go into simulate right here. And here you can find something called particles. And here you can see that there's emitter. So once I actually bring in the emitter, you can see that it is a square like shape. I can place it anywhere. And this is actually dynamic. So if I were to increase my frame rate, let me just increase it to somewhere around 1000, just like this. And I'm going to hit the play button. And once I do that, you can see that there's bit of particles flowing in around over there. So what I can do is I can assign any of the shapes and then attach it to the particle. And I can, for that, I can simply go over here. I can actually bring in any shape I want. In my case, let me just bring in this uh, capsule right here. So let's say I'm gonna bring in this capsule. Let me just resize this because I want the uh, overall shape to be quite small. So I'm gonna go over to the side and resize it right over here. Let's resize it out. And there you go. This is what I want. So I'm going to bring drag in the capsule under the emitter right over here. So uh, you can see that now capsule is a part of emitter. But here you don't see any changes yet. And now what I want to do is I want to enable uh, the object in the emitter. So I'm going to go into the emitter and over here you can see that there's show object. So let me just click on it and you can see that the object is here. So just like this, as you can see from the beginning, uh, it is emitting different sorts of uh, the capsule right over here, but but it's ending at a certain point right about over here. That is because the stop emission is at 150 frames. So I'm just going to make sure it is around a thousand frame itself. So I'm just going to add in a thousand right over here. So it keeps on continuing uh, until the end of my timeline right here. So over here, you can see that there's the birth rate editor right now. It's 10. And if I were to increase this, you can see that there's more number of editor right here. And one really brings out the number down. So a one per, uh, per second, as you can see right there. But if I were to increase this, so there's 10 per second right over here. And I can increase this out according to how many I require. So there's also the birth rate renderer. So you can actually have less number of birth rate right here. So you can have on the renderer somewhere around 50 and when it renders everything out. It'll render out uh, 50. So if I were to press Control R, you'll be able to see much more emission over here. So let me just go over here, uh, right, right there. And you can see that there's much more rendering uh, going on with the emitting right there. So for the preview, if you want to uh, increase your workflow, you can actually work with this. So that is what it means. So there you go. So let me just play it around and let's see how everything works like. So there's the visibility. So you can actually bring down the visibility of the um, uh, um, of the uh, shapes over there as well. So you can see that there's much more, it's only 30%. As you can see, 100% brings out all of it, as you can see right there. So you can also work around with where you want to start emission. Right now, it starts right from the beginning. Well, let's say I want to start only from around 100 frames. So you can see till 100 frame, it doesn't start, but right from over here, it starts right there. You can also increase the level of seeds right here, which actually means more, uh, just um, more speed over here and you can also go to relative speed right over here you can also choose the lifetime of the emitter right here right now the lifetime is 600 frames so let's say i want the lifetime to be quite short so let's say around 30 frames and you can see that it the lifetime ends really fast so you can control the amount of lifetime of the emitter as well so let's say something like 90 and it goes along uh to a much more farther space just like this you can see it starts from, let me just set it back to one right there. And you can see that this is how it emits everything out till uh, 90 frames. You can also have variations. So variation means that you can see that there's a different pattern of the emitter right there. You can also increase the speed. So more speed, as you can see, it is faster now, as you can see right there. You can also work around with the rotation right there. So you have various rotations going on around. If you were to really increase it, you can see that it is rotating around. So it seems like a bunch of capsules flying around right over there. So let's just go over here, just like that. And let me just decrease the speed right here on 200 centimeters right over here. So it is quite slow as you can see right there. So on the uh, lifetime, I'm just gonna give it to around uh, 6500 itself so that it actually keeps on going in. So now there's the variation as well. You can see that everything actually goes around. Uh, there's the variation of the uh, rotation as well, as you can see. So just like that, you can also increase and decrease the end scale right over here. So let's say the end scale is around zero. So you can see that it gradually 
uh, become smaller as time goes by. So on the on the uh, lifetime, let's say around, I want it around 100 again, you can see that it actually goes around just like this, really works around when you uh, want to have a smoky like effect just like that. So let me just increase the lifetime for around uh, 300 frames so you can see that it actually goes around just like that and it becomes smaller gradually. So over here, you can also work around with the end scale and you can work around with the variation of the shape and size of the emitter as well. So this is how you can work around with this. So you can also render it out so you can render instance so it becomes faster as you can see. So just like this and tangential really slows that, that down just like that as you can see there's no randomization or anything. It is, every, it is very still just like that and the sequence. So that is how you can work around with an emitter. Another thing that, that you can do is you can apply uh, dynamics to uh, the objects as well. And to demonstrate that, I'm just going to pause this for a while. I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to apply a simulation tag. And let's say this is going to be a rigid body. So if I were to do that to the object, if I were to play it now, you can see that it actually starts falling down. And now I can actually grab a plane right here. Let's just expand everything out. So let's just expand the plane out over here, just like that. And I'm going to turn this on to a collider body. So I'm going to right click over here on to the render tag, not render tag, simulation tag. I'm going to turn this on to a collider body and let's simulate this and see how everything looks like. And you can see that it actually uh, collides everything out just like that. And there you go. So. If I were to play this around, again, you can see from the side that everything is like a collider. So you want to generate a bunch of objects just like this, a bunch of objects falling around. Then you can use the emitter just like this. And you can see that you can really create cool animation uh, just like that. So that is how you can work around with the emitter and its options inside of Cinema 4D. Hope you guys learned something as always. And as always, please like, comment, share and subscribe.